happy people I'm back with another video and today I'm gonna to be doing a dip powder review for you all um I actually shopped the young nails black friday um mystery boxes where they had the uh, mystery boxes last year in one of their mystery boxes they included um all of their slick pores which is actually their dip system if you all have not checked that video out i am going to leave it linked in the cards as well as in the description box um, i'm going to leave actually both my videos because i ordered all three of the young nails mystery boxes last year and absolutely love them so yeah i wanted to actually test these out um in that mystery box they also included the Young Nails Conversion Base and Conversion Top Coat. So I've been dying to try out the Young Nails Dip System and so I figured now's the time to do it. I'm gonna go ahead and show you all what their Conversion Top Coat looks like. Um, let's see, it is like a medium viscosity. It has like a nice slow drip to it, so that is nice. It looks like it's a really nice uh, viscosity, so that's what the top coat is looking like. And then their base coat, um, which both of these bottles do come in 10 ml. This is what the base coat looks like. It's also, it's a thicker viscosity actually than the top coat, um, which is really nice. Y'all see the slow drip there. I actually like working with thicker gels and so I'm gonna be really excited to put this to use because I actually love doing dip powder nails with gel. Y'all know that's my go-to. I typically use the Beatles uh, base and top coat so I'll be excited to give the Young Nails uh, version a try. So in that mystery box, I think it included like six of their slick pores and then the two other slick pores that I have, I got in my Ultimate Pro Kit. Um, I do also have an unboxing of my ultimate pro kit on my channel as well so i will leave that linked in case you guys want to check it out so i do want to go through and show you all what each one of these dip powders look like so first i'm going to be showing you all body glove this is like a really pretty like soft translucent kind of pink so that's really pretty flash and burn this is like a really pretty like oh my god it's like a really pretty um Kind of like a diamond powder almost like y'all see the shimmer in here like it's really really beautiful and it's like very flashy absolutely love how that looks kind of gives me wet and day vibes jade smoke which is really like a really pretty mint green kind of color love that jazz note which is this absolutely stunning kind of glitter slash metallic blue i really love how this color looks it's such a nice vibrant royal blue next we have white is white which you know is a, a white color here and i do want to just feel the consistency of them y'all when i say that these dip powders are smooth like they feel like i don't even know i mean they feel so smooth to the touch like i mean my fingers are just gliding across one another really really like these under the radar which i believe is a clear so that's what that looks like again consistency is really nice smooth wine flight okay and this is a really pretty kind of vibrant purple color really like that last but definitely not not least we have kitty bliss oh my gosh this is an absolutely stunning glitter color really really love this a lot and so yeah i am going to go ahead and swatch all these colors for you guys i do have five of these colors swatched already and i did go ahead and swatch them with monomer and i left three of them to go ahead and swatch on camera with you guys to see um how these dip powders perform with monomer i'm going to go in with my young nails monomer for the swatching process i do have my cute little leaf dish because it is fall these are the containers the slick pores come in um they are 0 0.05 ounce containers and I'm first I'm gonna go in with the color jazz note it's this really beautiful kind of metallic blue color I did want to show you all how I pick up the bead for the dip powder I'm gonna do the same technique that they always show in all their videos I'm gonna get some monomer on the brush tap to the side once bounce one two three and this is how it polymerizes okay and after it's finished polymerizing I am gonna set it down on the brush here oops like so and they do say that their slick pores can be doubled as not only dip powders but also as colored acrylics and so I definitely wanted to make sure I um, showed what they look like kind of using them as both okay so it looks like it's laying really nicely the bead sets down really nicely see how it melts into there very easy to work with here 
Yeah, I really enjoy Young Nails products a lot. You all know I have a lot of their acrylics. Um, and yeah, I just feel like they're really nice for uh, beginners when it comes to learning how to lay acrylic. And they also have a lot of wonderful educational um, videos and information on their website that really um, makes the process easier when you're a newbie trying to get into acrylic and learning how to lay it and use it. And it's just great that they just have so much information on their site that teaches you how to use their products. I'm going with one more bead here at the bottom just to finish up this swatch, but y'all see how beautifully it lays. It self levels nicely. I'm just gonna go ahead and finish swiping that on out. Really beautiful color, really beautiful. That is an absolutely stunning color. I'm gonna go ahead and let that polymerize. And the next color I'm gonna go in with is Kitty Blitz. It's absolutely gorgeous glitter. Pick up a bead, I'm gonna saturate my brush. Go bounce, bounce, bounce. This is how it polymerizes here. Really pretty, oh my goodness. And I'm gonna just set it down and move the acrylic where I want it to be. Okay. That one seemed like it was too dry. Let me try another one, like so. Okay, happy people. So as I was working with this Kitty Bits dip powder, I realized that it was super dry. It kind of reminded me of another acrylic that they came out with called Adult Daycare. Um, and it seems like the acrylics that they have that have a lot of glitter in it seems to be on the drier side. This one seems a little bit more drier to work with as an acrylic. Just because I think all the glitters. Yeah, but this glitter is absolutely stunning though. Oh my goodness. It's on the drier side, but it is really pretty once you get it laid down. Holy moly. Wow, you guys, this color is absolutely stunning. I love it. And so that I don't contaminate my next swatches, I'm gonna go in with a different brush in um, monomer. And then the last color I'm gonna go in with is under the radar. And I believe this is a clear, so we'll see how clear this clear actually is. I am used to working with the Young Nails Speed Clear. So, okay, this clear works. Okay, so this one behaves a lot different than the other dip powders I just swatched. This one actually starts to self-level really nicely. Yeah, you see how it melts into it? This is how their acrylics normally perform. So that's interesting. It seems like it's made differently. Yeah, this, this is nice. This is nice. As I was swatching this acrylic, it did make me feel like I was working with maybe the clear from their core line. So I do feel like the formula of the dip powders are slightly different. Um, they do say you can use them as colored acrylics, but I will say that they perform differently depending on the color and if it has glitters or not. So just keep that in mind. All right, so that's what the clear is clear is like. This is what all of the colors look like swatched out. I'm just gonna go through and show you all what they look like up close. Jazz Note, which again is that really beautiful blue color. This is what it looks like matte. And this is what it would look like top coated and it's been about maybe 10 minutes I do want to see if it's hardened and yes they have hardened after about 10 minutes so that's nice I do think that these take a little bit longer to cure or to polymerize if I'm not mistaken um, when I swatch these I actually lost track of time I got a call so um, I have to go through again to see how long it really takes for it to set this one here is kitty blitz do y'all see this glitter OMG absolutely stunning and this is what it looks like glossy oh my gosh i am in love i'm definitely using this color today it's stunning body glove which is this really beautiful translucent pink color and that's what it will look like glossy jade smoke which again like i said is this really pretty mint green color this is what it would look like glossy wine flight which is this absolutely stunning bold purple color this is what it would look like glossy. I really, really like how this looks. I believe actually this was the first dip powder um, from Young Nails that I swatched with monomer, so that's why it looks a little lumpy and spotty. I was still getting the hang of the monomer to the powder ratio down. Flash and burn, and y'all, this is absolutely stunning. I love the shimmer that's in there. It just makes it look like really beautiful crushed diamonds. Like, oh my gosh, this gives me wedding vibes. White is white. This one, I don't believe is set all the way just yet. So I'm still able to kind of push my nail into it, but it's not causing any indentation. So the one thing I will say is just that maybe the dip powders take a little bit longer to polymerize. And then last here we have under the radar, which is the clear. And that's what it would look like glossy. 
and this one is already hardened up. I feel like the clear I feel like the clear I had the easiest time working with and I'm not sure if maybe they use some of their formula from their regular acrylic line but I felt like I had the easiest time working with this one. So yeah y'all I'm going to go ahead and decide what design I want to do. I am going to be doing that design on this hand. If you all are curious about this set here I do have a full tutorial for it linked down in the description box below. On this hand I did use my rose peel off method. I did this set last week and as you all can see it is still lasting one week strong. That's just me giving you all a quick update of my rose peel off method. Um, if you all are curious about that method I am going to leave a video Video for that link down in the description box but essentially it allows you to wear acrylic nails for about a week week and a half while still having an easy pop-off removal and so yeah these are about ready to get popped off so I've decided what look I want to do I'm gonna be going in with this pretty wine flight color and kitty blitz color I'm gonna be using my stiletto nail tips that I got from Amazon these are like my favorite nail tips ever I did check you guys this is the box that it comes in these are still on sale on Amazon for two bucks so if you all want to get your hands on them you should I'm gonna leave a link down in the description so I'm just gonna show you all just a little bit of quick prep I'm gonna go in with swipe I already lightly lightly buffed the surface of my nails and push back my cuticles I'm just gonna use swipe to wipe off all the dust and debris from my nails I'm gonna go through and wipe that off twice And I am going to be doing a peel off method. So again, this is my rose peel off method. I do this method when I do both my um, dip powder and acrylic sets. Now I'm going to go in with protein bond. So with my peel off method, you want to just slightly prep the nails. And by applying protein bond, that's going to allow for good adhesion um, of your sets to last while still having easy removal with a peel-off base coat. So I'm going to go through and apply that to all of the nails really quick. And I'm just going to do one coat of protein bond. I know typically Young Nails recommends two, but this stuff works really good. And so um, I still want to be able to remove my nails after a week. So I'm just going to do one coat. So you'll want to let that dry. Next, I'm going to go in with my Marine Peel-Off Base Coat and apply that to all the nails in Cure. This is what's gonna allow for my nails to pop off really easily after about a week or week and a half of wear. Now that the nails have been cured, I'm gonna go in with my MAC Top Coat and I'm gonna apply that to all the nails so I can mimic what a dehydrated nail bed would look like. This is what the nails look like after they've been prepped for the tips. Um, you all can see that with my peel off method, it does mimic what a dehydrated nail bed would look like. And so now from here, you can go in with either acrylic application, dip application, um, pretty much any application really on top. I'm gonna go ahead and apply my um, tips and I am gonna use my flash curing lamp. Again, everything that I'm using will be linked down in the description box below. And I wanna go ahead and apply them with the conversion base gel. I'm just curious to see how well this product performs. So we're going to give it a go here with doing this. You'll want to take one of your tips You apply just a little bit of the gel to the inside of the nail like so you want to go ahead and turn the light on You'll just adhere it to your natural nail like so and then cure underneath the light And that's what it looks like after it's been applied. I am going to go ahead and repeat this process to all the nails So this is what all the nail tips look like after they've been applied and cured for 60 seconds. Now to reinforce the actual nail bed and to maybe build a little bit of structure, I'm going to use the conversion base as well as under the radar, which is the clear from Young Nails to help build the structure of my nails. I'm going with a thin coat of the conversion base here. And when doing dip powder nails with gel, I do like to pour over. I find that it just lends to a more natural and seamless application. So I do have my cupcake liners here. I'm just gonna pour the powder over the entire nail and let it soak into the nail, like so. Beautiful. Tap off the excess. Oh, that's pretty. And I'm gonna flash cure that for 10 seconds. And then I'm gonna go through and repeat the process on all the rest of the nails. So I'm gonna go in with the thin layer of the conversion base, pour over the clear dip powder or slick pour, and then cure for 10 seconds. And then once I have all the nails complete, I'll do a full cure of all the nails for 60 seconds.
Okay, so this is what all of the nails look like after they've been cured for 60 seconds. I'm gonna go through and wipe off that the excess dust. And one of the things I like about using gel is that you can use a hard brush and really get into those cuticles to clean up what has taken place. I am gonna go in with a second layer of the under the radar clear to build up the structure of the nails just a little bit because I'm using nail tips. So again, you wanna go in with that thin layer remembering to flash cure in between each layer and then a full cure after all the nails have been done. So this is what all the nails look like after with two coats of the clear dip. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this off. And as you all can see, it built up just a little bit of structure on the nails. And so now I'm gonna go in with Wine Flight color, which is just lovely, gorgeous purple. So again, I'll go in with a layer of my conversion base here. I'm gonna take my little dish here. This is a dish that's supposed to be used for like French tips, but I really like using it for doing my dip powder nails. And I'm just gonna go ahead and pour this color over the entire length of the nail, like so. And actually, I like to just kind of let it sit in there for like five to 10 seconds before I move it. And then I'll just tap the powder off. And nice even coverage. It still looks a little wet. I keep pouring my powder over my layers of gel until it looks like it's fully absorbed into the base coat. So I'm gonna tap off and see if it looks like it's absorbed. That looks like it absorbed just a little bit more. I am gonna go ahead and just tap it in like this just to get one more coat on there. Okay, and now I'm gonna tap off. And that looks good to me. I'm gonna go ahead and flash through that for 10 seconds. I'm gonna repeat the same process on my ring finger. So to avoid wasting product, I'm just gonna go ahead and use my cupcake liner because this ain't, I don't wanna be wasting product like this. <laughs> this is what the first layer looks like after it's been cured. I must say, I am impressed with the opacity of these dip powders, like that's just one dip. So technically I don't need another one, but I am gonna go in with the second dip because that's just what I'm used to doing. So I'm gonna go ahead and wipe off the excess powder here gonna go in with my second layer of my purple again thin layer of the base coat and then pour over the purple go ahead and dust these off really quick this is what two coats of the purple looks like beautiful I love this purple next I'm gonna go in with kitty blitz okay and I'm gonna apply that to all the rest of the fingers. I'm gonna repeat that same process by going in with a thin layer of the conversion base over the entire nail. Now, when working with glitters, I found it easier to just dip, the, dip your nail into the glitter itself. So I'm just gonna go upside down into the glitter like so. And yeah, that's beautiful. Um, but I didn't get it close to the cuticle, so I might need to pour some out and dip it from here. Y'all, look how pretty that is, jeez. So now I'm gonna go ahead and dip like this. There we go, now I can get to the cuticle as well. Yeah, that's perfect. So I'm gonna go ahead and tap off the excess. With working with the glitters, because you have to dip in upside down, it does kind of move the product over the nail. So I'm just gonna go in with my finger and just make sure that glitter is still on the nail and not kind of hanging off the side of the nail. And then I just kind of want to flatten it out so that the nail kind of keeps its shape a little bit. So you'll go through and do that all over. Just lightly tap it. You don't have to do too much, just a light tap there. And again, just pat it into the nail like so. Once that's applied, you cure for 10 seconds. Y'all, this glitter is everything, okay? All right, next I'm gonna go in and do the same thing on the pinky. Oh my goodness! Okay, so that's what one layer of the Kitty Blitz looks like. I'm not gonna lie, I really don't feel like I need two, but I am gonna go in with the second layer just to try to build up the structure of the nail a little bit. Um, I guess technically I could go in and do that with my uh, the conversion base and top, but let's see if we can amplify these glitters just a little bit, okay? With glitters, I'm gonna go in with a fluffy brush to clean off just so that I don't disturb the glitters too much. And I'll just wipe it down like so 
and then I'll do the same thing on the pinky. So I'm going to go in with one more layer of the conversion on the middle and pinky. Yeah, that's pretty. Okay, so remember when working with glitter dips, you want to make sure um, after you tap into the powder upside down, you go through and gently pat the glitter onto the nail. And y'all, this glitter was so shimmery and so shiny and so beautiful that my camera could not stay in focus. I absolutely love this color. So this is what all the nails look like applied. Y'all, this feel like a disco ball party that I'm gonna go to with these nails. So I'm gonna go ahead and dust off the excess glitter from the nail, okay? Very beautiful. I do feel like the nails are still looking kind of flat. In order to help with the structure, I am gonna go in with two layers of the conversion base and then one layer of the conversion top coat. So I decided to go in with my SXC base coat because it's really, really, really thick. And I'm needing to build up the structure of the nails a little bit. Um, I just did my thumbnail off camera and I put on two layers of the conversion base first before I went in with the two layers of the under the radar clear. And my nail is still looking pretty flat. So that lets me know that even though the conversion base feels like it's of like a medium viscosity, it actually ends up going on the nail pretty thin, which is actually a good thing when it comes to dip powder, uh, but just not good for me right now with wanting to build up the structure of my nail. So I'm gonna go in with a thicker base coat. So I'm gonna use my SAC base coat. And I'm gonna do two coats of the base on all the nails, and then I'll go in with my top coat. And this is just to build the structure of the nail and to also encapsulate so that I can start to shape and file. Alrighty, so this is what two coats of the um, SXC base, base coat looks like. And I do want to try out the Ultimate Finish Gel from Young Nails. Um, I've heard good things about it. It's supposed to be a no wipe. Yeah, no sticky layer to wipe. So let's see how their Ultimate Finish Gel is. My first time using this top coat. I did try their manicure top coat and I'll be honest, I really wasn't the biggest fan of it. The sticky layer never really stopped being sticky, <laughs> if that makes sense. I'm hoping that this one does me a little bit better. Ooh, that's pretty. I really like the consistency of this, um, this top coat though. It's nice and thick and it self levels beautifully. Alrighty, so that ultimate finish gel is looking pretty nice and pretty glossy. So now I'm gonna go through and actually crisping up the shape of the nails because they definitely lost their stiletto shape with all these layers of gel. So I'm just gonna go through and just crisping up each side of the edge and then maybe I'll go through and buff the top just to really get a nice smooth even surface. This is what the nails look like after they have been filed, shaped, and buffed. Now I'm gonna go in with a little bit of nail art. I have here this really beautiful, cute cluster charm that I got from Shein a while back, and I thought this would look perfect on this set, so I am gonna go in with my rhinestone glue from McCart's, and I'm gonna apply that to my index finger, and I wanna put it right at the cuticle area. And then I'm gonna to top that off with a little bit of the Young Nails um, Ultimate Finish Gel. Now I'm going to go ahead and place the charm right here at the cuticle, like so. And I'm just going to make sure I press down so that that charm gets nice and secure inside of that rhinestone glue. That looks good to me. I'm going to go ahead and cure for 60 seconds. It is looking so cute, y'all. So now I actually wanted to go in and create my own 3D charm. And I want to put that on my ring finger. And I thought it would be fitting if I made a charm that actually matched. And I do have some of my Young Nails monomer already ready to go. And then I'm also going to try to make maybe a few of these uh, purple hearts. So I'm just going to make a few different hearts um, right now. And then whichever one I like the most, that's the one I'll go ahead and put on my nails. I'm actually going to use this brush that came in like a Born Pretty kit. I'm not the biggest fan of it, but I just need to pick up and place down. So yeah, y'all, I'm going to go ahead and make a few different charms here, okay? And I'll make one big purple one. So, and I'll just put it all throughout the mold and let it polymerize, okay? And you'll want a pretty wet bead when you're doing this, just so that all the product can kind of go into all the crevices of the mold, if that makes sense. So this is actually my first time doing this, so I hope it turns out well. <laughs> Okay, 
that's looking pretty good and then I think I want to make like a medium sized heart and then a small heart as well like just so that I can have some options so I'm gonna put that right up in here like so and then I'm gonna do that medium sized one next so I'm gonna put that right on up in here Okay, so I think that's all the purple hearts I want to do. Now I'm going to go in with this flash and burn and do the same thing. Okay, happy people. So I found that when making DIY nail charms using acrylic and monomer, it's best to work with a very, very wet bead. Um, having a wet bead is going to allow for that um, liquid monomer to really soak into the crevices of the silicone mold. So I found that to be the easiest way to make and shape my DIY nail charms. You know, I think while I have it out and about, I might as well go ahead and do another heart color. So I think I'm gonna just go in with this blue <laughs> and make a blue heart too. You know, just, just so I don't, I don't waste my monomer and such, you know what I mean? It is about an hour and a half later. Oops. And this is what the molds are looking like. Um, I just thought this side of it looked really cool too. But let's go ahead and pop them all out and see how our DIY nail charms turned out. Okay. Looks like they're having an easy time coming out. Oh my gosh. Look at this. Y'all, this heart is everything. OMG. Wow, these turned out really, really, oh wow. Look, y'all. Oh my gosh, you guys, these hearts turned out so freaking cute. So we have that beautiful um, purple heart here. With these, I did not add enough acrylic to the inside of the mold, but I'll know to fix that next time. And I didn't realize that there were flat hearts and round hearts. I really like how the round hearts turned out. So these are the hearts that are probably my favorite. They're beautiful. They are um, sparkly and they have that nice roundness to it. These blue hearts turned out really good as well. And these are freaking gorgeous. So yeah, y'all, that's a quick little tutorial there on how to make some DIY nail charms, okay? So I do think that I'm gonna go in with this beautiful glittery heart here. And I think I might end up just doing like it right there in the center of the nail. Maybe I'll do one like, like going that way. And then I can do this smaller heart like maybe like this and I think that looks really cute so I think that's what I'm gonna do y'all y'all let's see how high this big heart looks this this heart is this heart too big though ain't it or is it it look kind of cute though yeah I think this one is a bit too big for this set that I want to do so I'm gonna go ahead and use that later and they're really lightweight too I like this it turned out great I am actually um, filing the pieces of the heart that were kind of like overflowed to get it to be like laying nice and flat on the nail. So I'm just gonna speed through me doing that really quick. My cute little heart charms are all ready to go. I'm gonna go in with my rhinestone glue again. Back of this charm is just slightly hollow. I'm gonna add a little bit of the rhinestone glue inside of there as well just so that it doesn't like accidentally pop off because you know it didn't get properly secured. I am gonna go in with some cuticle oil and we are gonna get into this finished look. I don't know if you all know this or not, but at the end of all of my videos when I'm applying my cuticle oil, it is actually the Young Nails Rose Oil. Y'all can see I have used quite a bit of this. This is one of my used and abused products. And so yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and apply some cuticle oil. All right, you guys, ain't she cute though? Yes, y'all, I am loving how this beautiful dip set turned out. Y'all, I did that with these charms, okay? Do y'all see my little hearts that I made myself? Made by Rose Beauty, yours truly, okay? <laughs> Yes, I am loving how it turned out, y'all. It is so freaking cute. And let's not even start on how freaking stunning this Kitty Blitz color is. They did an amazing job with that glitter dip. It's just absolutely beautiful. But yeah, y'all, what do y'all think about my mani? Okay, what y'all think about my dip application?
completion. Um, I was trying to get some structure on these nails. It was a struggle and a half, but you know, I did what I could. This little charm is giving all type of glamorousness, and these hearts just really set it off and really tied in all those glitter uh, dips together. So yeah, my final thoughts on the Young Nails Slick Pour System. The conversion base and top coat, well I didn't even get around to using the top coat. I ended up using the Ultimate Finish top coat, so I can't say too much about how that performs, but the base coat worked beautifully for applying dip powders. I will say it's of a thinner consistency, so I found that um, it leaves like a really nice thin layer over the nail. So if you all are not into having like thick bulky nails, this is a really great base coat. As far as the Slick Pour dip powders are concerned, I do feel like there's like a lack of consistency between the different colors. So with the clear, I felt like it was the smoothest and most finely milled. Um, the glitter was good, um, but I guess in regards to using it with monomer, if you want to double it as an acrylic, it was kind of dry to work with, um, but it applied beautifully with the gel and as a dip powder. And then with this um, wine flight color, it's interesting. I really feel like this felt like a pigment as I was trying to use it as a dip powder. Um, and it kind of almost looks like a pigment too, right? So I do like the fact that it's super opaque because really after one coat, that's all I needed. But overall, I really enjoyed working with the Young Nail Slick Pour System. I do um, intend to use it even more in the future. Yeah, y'all, those are my thoughts on the Young Nail Slick Pour. Tell me down in the comments and down in the chat, what is up? How did I do? Okay, how did I do? Okay, let me stop being extra, y'all. Let me know which application you all would like to see me work with next. I think next week I'm going to do some Builder Gel nails. I do upload every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. Thursdays in particular are my Nail Therapy Thursday premieres where I tune in live with you all as you watch me do my nails. And if you all like like what you saw here definitely stick around join the happy family i'd love to have you and as always you guys leave some love in the comments down below and i'll see you in my next video i hope you all have a wonderful awesome spectacular day bye